pancakes. Fluffy, carby, tasty. Who hasn't woken up on a Saturday morning wanting a delicious stack of pancakes? But are all pancakes created equal? That's what we're here to find out. Welcome to the culture of cookery. So just as a quick disclaimer, we are gonna set aside the souffle pancake because that's kind of a cheat and we're only looking at the kind of classic all American or all Canadian for all of those of you that are Canadian. Pancake, let's get to it. First up, food wishes. Flour, sugar, one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt. Next we have baking powder and interestingly enough, Chef John only uses baking powder. Then we're just gonna whisk it up. Easy. Now on to the wet ingredients. To the same bowl we add our regular milk and no buttermilk in this recipe, plus an egg and melted butter. I have to say that I love that everything was mixed in one bowl because as you know, I'm not about that life of doing dishes. Then I let the batter sit for about five minutes before cooking. Chef John's method of choice is a skillet sprayed with cooking spray. I found that the batter was super bubbly and aerated, though it was also quite thick. The pancakes had a good amount of lift while cooking, and after fiddling a bit to get the right heat, it came out with a nice golden color. What do you think? Okay, so into the dry bowl, we're going to add our flour. We're gonna throw in some sugar. And then we have a combo of baking powder and baking soda. There we go. And two teaspoons of salt. So salt is definitely higher on this one. Give it a whisk. For this one, we have buttermilk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. Come on. And I'll just put the egg yolks straight into there. Egg whites we're going to add separately according to the recipe. Then pour your melted butter straight into your buttermilk to make it even butterier, I guess. And then whisk it all together until you get a somewhat homogenous mixture. That will then be poured straight into your bowl of dry ingredients. One of the things they stress in the video is to mix just enough so that there's still lumps, that there's still air pockets, and not to over mix. It's like that. Then what they tell us to do is add the unwhipped egg whites. We're just gonna mix it until it is not snotty. <laughs> they insist that you let this rest in the fridge for about 15 minutes. We'll see you in a little bit, Tasty. So we're moving on to Matty Matheson's. And the first thing that he has us do is sift everything. So we're gonna sift our flour, sift the sugar. And then he has baking soda and baking powder as well. And he said, always put a good pinch of salt. And of course my sugar is too wide to go through. One thing I will say about this recipe is that it uses a lot of eggs in comparison to the other ones. Maddie calls for separating them and whipping the egg whites, which he then mixes with the buttermilk and whisks again. Then he adds sugar to the egg yolks and whisks again. And then the egg yolks get added to the egg whites and you get it, that's a lot of mixing. Shablam. And when you add the wet mix to the dry, Maddie adamantly asks that you leave pockets of flour and air and not to over mix. Fold it over gently until everything is just incorporated. I don't know if you can see this, but this one is already looking like a marshmallow on steroids. I guess that doesn't make any sense. Like a, a wet pillow. It's a very inviting. Maddie Matheson says to let his rest for a few minutes in the fridge too. So here's my prelim thoughts on Matthew Matheson's. The batter itself looks so fluffy. I think there's that aspect of using the egg whites, which really helped. In Tasty's test, they were saying that it really makes no difference of whether or not you beat the egg whites. So we'll see in the final taste test. Next step, last step is Epicurious. Ooh. Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. First thing is first, dry ingredients. This one, we're not gonna sift. We're just gonna toss it all in. Epicurious style, so we got our flour. We got the baking bros. Oh, a tablespoon, holy cow, okay. We're going with the tablespoon of butter, or whoops. <laughs> tablespoon of podre apat magique, which is also baking powder. There's a half a teaspoon, and that is a mess. What I'm just doing there. And a little bit of salt. One, two, Three. And give it a mix. One of the things that is cool about this recipe is that it doesn't use, one second, I can't talk and do things at the same time. It doesn't use buttermilk and instead it just uses regular milk and apple cider vinegar. 
To the homemade buttermilk, you'll add some oil and vanilla. Now, this is the only one of our recipes that uses vanilla, so I'm kind of curious to see what effect that has on the flavor. Your eggs will go straight into this wet mixture without separating or beating anything, which is awesome. And then you'll double check that you didn't miss any ingredients in your dry mix like <laughs> I did. Zabumafu, shablam. And then all your wet mix gets poured straight into the dry. And will it turn into whipped cream? Not whipped cream. It'll turn into pancakes. Do you like pancakes? Yeah. Yeah. And then this one, he said fold about 20 times. So we're going to count that one, two, Nine. Seventeen. Nineteen. Twenty. <sighs> Let's get cooking pancakes. <laughs> to prep for Epicurious's cooking process, you'll need to solicit the help of a little toddler to do some more whipping of the butter. Okay, what is that? This is now whipped butter. And now we're ready to start cooking. Because of all the different rest periods, it ended up working best for me to cook the last three recipes simultaneously. Both Maddie Matheson and Epicurious called for cooking in a non-stick surface, so they're going to share this griddle here. Epicurious's recipe on the left calls for cooking in the whipped butter that we made and isn't too fussy about achieving a perfectly round shape. Maddie Matheson's on the right calls for the use of cooking spray. Okay, so already what we're seeing here, I'm not noticing a big difference between egg whites being beaten and then egg whites not being beaten. They kind of look very similar to me. This one's definitely coming out a little bit more yellow. In the Epicurious one, there's definitely that cakey aroma, the vanilla is coming through. The Matthew Matheson one smells more sour and more buttermilky, if that makes any sense. So these are looking good. One, two, three. Ooh, look how fluffy those are. Matthew Matheson. Okay. Maddie Matheson, a little bit crisper. And then we have the Epicurious one. You can see there's volume there. That's cool. Now Tasty's recipe calls for cooking in a cast iron pan, which is super exciting, except that it took a few tries for me to get my pan to the right temperature. Oh, it's too much, too hot. I can feel it. Ah, come on. Animal. <laughs> okay, a little bit over still, but looking good. And now we're gonna try them all. We're gonna be looking at kind of three main criteria. Number one, we're looking at the texture. Is it fluffy? Is there like a contrast of maybe crunchy texture on the outside? We're looking at flavor. Obviously we all know what a box mix tastes like. Which one of these is gonna stack up and be a little bit better? And then lastly, we're looking at accessibility. Pancakes are something that you make on a Saturday morning and shouldn't take very much time. We're gonna try all these out and see where we're at. So number one, tasty. It is so hot over here. Oh yeah. So while this one doesn't have the height of what could be perceived as a very fluffy pancake, the mouthfeel is very light. Not light as in like um, marshmallow light, but light with texture. I don't know if that makes sense. There's still a little bit of give or something to it. I'm getting the hints of the butter. I guess this is just a really good pancake and I need to test it against what other pancakes taste like. So very good pancake. Next up is Matthew Matheson. I'm saying his name wrong the entire video. Matty Matheson, if you're out there, I'm so sorry for saying your name wrong, dude. So this one definitely has a little bit more height to it. This is the one where we whip the egg whites. I don't know, it's supposed to be fluffier, it's supposed to be higher at least. By higher, I mean taller. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. Okay, this one is definitely a lot sweeter. You can taste the amount of sugar that Maddie puts in his pancake. So that might have to do with like the better Maillard reaction on the outside. Definitely chewier. There's like more body and kind of girth. If you want to say it like that? That sounds weird. This one also, you had to whip the egg whites and this one didn't rest as long. Interesting. Okay, this is the Epicurious one. Again, wow. So I would say of all of these thus far, this seems to be the, the tallest of the bunch. This one was also cooked on a non-stick griddle like Maddie Matheson's, whereas the tasty one was cooked on a cast iron pan. 
this one is saltier. I wouldn't say savory. Salty, buttery. You do get a little bit more tartness, and that could be the apple cider vinegar that's happening in here. Definitely the tallest of the bunch. Also has the same kind of chew that Maddie Matheson's has. As you can see, the crumb is a lot denser, more more chewy, less toothsome. So I'm gonna come back to I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that one. I'm gonna come back to that one. And then this is our Chef John Foodwishes.com one, and this is probably the simplest of the bunch that we have. We got good height on this one. Taste test. Cheers. Mm. This is the least flavorful of all all four for sure. After having eaten all four, like. This is definitely the, I almost don't want to eat it. It's so gummy. It's not an undercooked pancake by any means. Like you people in the comments come at me. That is not an undercooked pancake, but like it's, it's exactly what it is. The all American old fashioned pancake that you think of when you're like camping or something, this is the one that you're probably eating. Yeah. Like, People went at me when I did the eggnog video and I was like, that one's kind of plain. Like, I can't cook better than Chef John. Thank you, Chef John. I love you, Chef John. But this one, those pancakes are not it. Like, they're, they're good. There's, there's better choices out there on the internet. As far as texture, gummy. As far as flavor, this is box mix. This is, this is the taste of box mix. Ease of use, like ease, definitely the easiest to make. There's no finesse required. You're throwing everything into one bowl. I do appreciate that. I do, but it's very plain. A little bit tart. Oh, interesting. Whoa. Oh God. I just went in reverse order here. I'm not trying to internet scam you. I promise. The two that are made with milk are definitely different. So this one has no acid, kind of dense. This is the Epicurious one. It had the milk and the apple cider, which is supposed to mimic the buttermilk. Lighter, for sure. I'll give it that. Flavor-wise, a little bit more complex. You have the, the little bit of tartness in there. And as far as ease of making, I didn't have to do anything too extra, right? Like, didn't have to beat the egg whites. Great. These two, Matheson and Tasty, this is actually on a different level. Like there is a noticeable, a noticeable, I'm not jesting with you, I'm not lying with you, I'm trying to be serious. There is a noticeable, distinguishable difference between using buttermilk and using milk. There's a softness, there is a tenderness, dare I say it, a sweetness. There's a something something happening here that is just like more milky and more soft that these two, they're not even in there. And I just thought, I was like, oh, this is good. But when you go in reverse order, there's a, there's a discernible difference. Now, as far as flavor wise, undisputably in my mind, in my mind, it has to be the tasty one. You get some kind of weird caramelized notes to it. I think maybe it's also just the amount of sugar they have in there. Is there more sugar? There's less sugar? So Maddie Matheson actually has more sugar because he added sugar later on, right? So that's so interesting. I'm also kind of getting sick. Like I, I can feel the pancake in the back of my throat. As far as texturally, I'm gonna say that this also goes to Tasty with their soft, creamy kind of a pancake. While not as tall, is fluffy. Part of me is thinking the resting period is the thing that maybe changes the game here. Tasty has you resting their pancake mix for 15 to 20 minutes, whereas this is five minutes, no minutes, no minutes. And I think there's something about that rest period that does something to the gluten and the flour that just like makes it a little bit more homogenous and like gooey, but not like gross. Does that make sense? And then as far as accessibility, easiest one by far is Chef John's with just throw everything in a bowl. And Maddie Matheson is definitely the most complex. You're beating egg yolks with the sugar, you're beating egg whites until they're stiff, adding the butter, like there's way more steps. And I don't think that the benefit that you get from the Maddie Matheson recipe even holds a candle to this tasty recipe. So all that being said, if there's one that I'm gonna make over and over again, it's going to tasty. Truthfully, I don't, like how many millions of views does this one have, babe? 14 million people, they can't be wrong. Flavor is there, the texture is there. The accessibility, with the exception of having to get your batter to wait 15 to 20 minutes, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to whip the egg whites. If I'm making pancakes again, in my humble opinion, Tasty is the one that takes the cake or Tasty is the one that takes the pancake. 
Anyways, should I try it with butter? Does it make a difference? The thing that I will steal from Epicurious is that whole whipped butter shenanigans. Whipped butter just seems like a good play. Do we have maple syrup? Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. Yeah, it's just good on every single front. So thanks for joining me today on The Culture of Cookery. If you're gonna make a pancake, it's probably got to be the tasty one. Spend a little extra money on that buttermilk. It does make a discernible difference. Whip some butter. That tastes really good on pancakes. And let your pancake batter rest. I think that's one of the main takeaways that I got from this one. If there are other food experiments that you're kind of thinking like, hey, is this a good thing to cook? Let me know down in the comments. Help me help you. Uh, if you like mashed potatoes, this is a video that you might want to watch too. So click it. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, I'm so full. I am more in the oven. Oh my goodness.